we get asked all the time, what is your number one tip for shooting ducks or shooting geese? And our answer, no matter which one of us that you ask, our answer is going to be scouting. By far and away, it is numero uno. You have to do your homework in order to be successful day in and day out. Sure, you can find ducks, you can find geese, go in, set up, and shoot them the next day, but more times than not, you're gonna get burned by not fully knowing what they're doing, when they're doing it, where they're coming from, where they're going, how they're using that area. And in this Waterfowl Wednesday video, it's a transition pond. And the only way that we learned that this was a transition pond was by eating two hunts prior to this hunt. Rather than going out and having a mediocre hunt, we had located these birds one day. We wanted to go back and make sure a number of things before we went in and hunted them. Number one, we wanted to know when they were coming and when they were going. Most importantly, we had to figure out if this pond was a roost or not. If it was a roost and we went in there at first light in the morning, this hunt was over before it started. So we had to do our homework and we camped out three-fourths of a mile away from this pond for I don't, probably the better part of 16 hours over the course of two days. Kill him. Kill him. Kill it. Out front. <laughs> You just want to kill this sprig? Kill, kill it. Hunting water sources can be tricky. It can offer up some awesome hunting, but you can also ruin not only a pond or a slough, you can wreck that entire area if you go in there and shoot it up if it's a roost. You know, those birds, they might relocate three, four, five miles down the road. Uh, worst case scenario, they pick up overnight and they are one or two states away because you ruined that roost. If you go in there and find ducks or geese on a pond, first off, figure out when they're coming to it, when they're going, is it a roost? If it is, start looking for that transition water source somewhere else in the area. Maybe they're not using a transition water source. Maybe they're going directly from pond to food. In that case, hit the food source. Don't hunt the roost just because there's tons of birds there. That is an incredibly awesome way to ruin it, not only for yourselves, but the other hunters in the area. And what we did in this scenario was we had to dot our I's, cross our T's, figure out exactly what these ducks were doing and when they were doing it. Had we not done that, we could have had an awesome hunt, absolutely. But we wanted to rest assured that we knew exactly what they were doing. The only way we were gonna figure that out was by scouting. And we had to forego a couple hunts in order to line all this up. I would much rather have a incredibly awesome, epic, you know, memorable hunt of a lifetime rather than go out a couple times and have a fair to mediocre hunt. I would much rather put my work in, put the time in, do the homework, and have that hunt of a lifetime, which is what this one was. It, it was a lot of effort. It was the most work that we have ever put into a hunt that we have shown you guys. If you wanna watch this entire episode, click the link below. There's also gonna be a pop-up up here. Click that. It's an awesome hunt on a transition pond in Alberta. It is full of mallards and pintails that were in our face awesome time with Kevin and Clayton, our buddies from Alberta. Make sure you like the video, share it with your buddies, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching Waterfowl Wednesday and we will see you again next week.